For many, Scotland is a land of castles, palaces and grand stately homes. Yet these iconic architectural statements tell only part of the story of our country's built heritage. The traditional building stock in Scotland ranges from the castles, the abbeys, large country houses, but also includes domestic buildings, factories, churches, the type of buildings where we live, work and play. Scotland is a land forged by a complex geological history, an unstoppable force of nature that has in turn given us a diverse range of traditional building materials. Many, such as stone and wood, have been used since the first inhabitants came to Scotland. Others, like pantiles and iron, date from more recent times. Together, they provide the raw materials for our most distinctive buildings. Traditionally, Scotland has used stone to create our buildings, and Scotland is a tremendously diverse geological country, so that geology beneath the ground is reflected above the ground. So you look at the, the sandstones of uh, around Dundee and Forfar, to the granites in the northeast, the buff sandstones of the new town of Edinburgh, um, we have a rich, diverse range of stone that is visible in the buildings and reflects their local and regional personalities. Our traditional buildings are really a testament to the, the people that put them together with their hands. Um, you know, quite often the architects and the engineers will get the credit. Part of this project is to raise the profile of the, the men, and sometimes women, who put our traditional buildings together. As wonderful as the raw materials are, as solid as the techniques used to make them, a building will deteriorate with age. That's why repair and maintenance accounts for as much as 40% of today's construction industry. The First and Second World Wars were a catalyst for change in this country. New materials were created and new construction techniques along with them. Yet this vital need to rebuild quickly after the wars also led to an erosion of both the use of traditional building materials and the skills that went with them. It is only in recent years that we have understood just how crucial sustainability is just how vital respect is for our traditional buildings. Modern forms of construction um, generally might have a design life of 50 years perhaps. Um, you know, obviously in centuries past they didn't think about design life necessarily in the way that we would now, but traditional forms of construction are much more suitable for long life and adaptation. So we might get 200 years out of a slate roof. Um, as opposed to concrete tiles, we may get 25, 30 years. So there's something eminently sustainable about traditional forms of construction that isn't always there in new build. There's a real challenge for us in maintaining the skill sets required to look after traditional buildings. Some of the, the, the big areas like joinery and roofing, for example, you know, will continue to be taught in colleges. There are some skill sets that are on the point of being lost, thatching perhaps being a, a good example. The challenge for Historic Scotland is to find ways of keeping these skills alive. It is possible to stop the decline in traditional building skills. We can train, we can invest, we can inspire. What is more difficult is the decline in the availability of our once common building materials. And this has serious implications for the maintenance of our building stock. Using inappropriate materials and repairs can do more harm than good the whole integrity of our built heritage can suffer. Our traditional buildings help define who we are. They tell of our history, our culture and our character. As we look to the future and more sustainable forms of construction, we would do well to learn the lessons of the past.